combination of uh, both the domestic and the foreign money you've borrowed from different entities, be it public or private. Uh, if we look at the domestic uh, date here in Uganda, government has been borrowing money from uh, different private firms, for example, Standard Chartered Bank for mm -hmm. the acquisition of the cameras. Recently, it was about $100 million. Then you also have different uh, private firms that have been offering government services and they've not been able to receive their payment. So those are also demanding money. That's a debt you okay. have to pay back. And also other commitments government has. For example, there are some court cases whereby uh, government has been sued and it has to compensate people. Yeah. You could term that as also as domestic debt. Then if you look at uh, the foreign debt, basically it is... Uh, uh, estimated in foreign currency using the dollar. This is money we've been able to borrow from World Bank, from IMF, uh, from uh, the African Development Bank and other development organizations, basically to be able to kickstart our economy. And uh, you realize that most of this money has been going uh, currently to the infrastructure sector, which includes roads, uh, the energy and minerals, basically in line with uh, pre uh, the ending NDP2, which was uh, focusing on infrastructure development to be able to create linkages for other sectors like agriculture, trade and tourism, to be able to uh, spur the economy to middle income status. And uh, right now the country is planning to launch the NDP3, which hopes to build on to what the NDP2 has been able to achieve mm -hmm. at the moment. and. Uh, if you consider why uh, the country is borrowing, realize that our budget, first of all, uh, our domestic revenue cannot be able to sustain the entire budget. So the only option you have is to have a combination of debt and some of the revenue you are able to collect. Domestic revenue. Yes, that's how the picture comes into play. And also, how big is our uh, uh, debt? And what percentage does it take of our budget? Because this then will greatly shape into if really some of these loans are necessary and we have the capacity to pay back these loans. Uh, well, according to statistics from Bank of Uganda, about April, our debt is about uh, 53 trillion Ugandan shillings. And uh, this is about over, I think, about $14 billion. And you realize that our current budget is about <coughs> 45 trillion. So if you have about uh, 53 trillion you're already it is almost it's a hundred percent point something of your entire budget and if you look at uh, the statistics showing how uh, what we call debt servicing which is a combination of uh, paying the interest and the principal uh, it is about 12 trillion uh, for this current financial year and the previous year it was about 10 point Zero three trillion. So I realize that if you have a budget of 45 trillion and uh, you're going to pay about 12 trillion for debt servicing, which includes interest and principal repayments, you have uh, about, uh, I could say about 30, 33 trillion left for you to operate. So that's a very big chunk, which means that ideally if uh, you're the one cutting the cake, there are some sectors you'll be able to either limit the allocation or maybe forego certain uh, ob obligations or put them on hold. Yeah. Uh, Uganda Debt Network, one of the things you do is to bring out information on these debts that we are getting, yes. but also if we are putting them to proper use. Because any person would say for a developing country, third world countries, borrowing is inevitable. And there is no problem with borrowing. But if what you're borrowing for really serving the purpose, that is where I want us to dive into. You've brought out a couple of reports almost each year. Mm. You bring out reports. Uh, this year I haven't seen one yet, uh, but I think still also too early. Mm. So you show how the monies we've borrowed and how we've put them to use. And usually there's a very big uh, gap there between effective use and monies that are just squandered. Uh, well, uh, when we go to the side of uh, utilization of this money, it is a very big picture because uh, you realize that uh, basically most of the money is going to the infrastructure sector, mm -hmm. which includes uh, roads and dams. These are long-term projects. And uh, previously there was a challenge whereby government was borrowing from the private sector. These are people who cannot give you money in the long term. Mm -hmm. 
because they are looking at liquidity. They need their money back and they need to make profit mm -hmm. and be able to recycle the money. So previously, government was borrowing money to finance long-term projects using short-term financing. Mm -hmm. So that, that, that was a mismatch already. You realize that if you're having, a, let's say, a five-year project and you have to pay back the money in two years or three, by, before you even complete the project, you have to pay back the money. So you're left with an option. Either you pay back the money or you renegotiate for an extension of the terms, mm -hmm. which is also a cost to your side. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically, uh, we can see the there are so many things government has been able to achieve through this uh, debt financing. Very many visible things, you can say. For example, uh, you realize the uh, revival of the airline, uh, several, the Ginger Bridge, among other things, even Karuma, Dam, w which is on a good side. I mean, uh, but, uh, yes? No, I, mean, I was just asking, maybe uh -huh. what's the percentage of what normally comes out? Uh, to fit to do the purpose of what the intention versus the times when it doesn't? Uh, an estimate could be hard for me to make on oh, the yes, moment okay. because uh, d different projects have different sizes mm -hmm. and uh, objectives. But uh, what I can say is that the positives are there. Mm -hmm. uh, we can appreciate them. But also the shortcomings are there. Basically, uh, if I could give an example of the infrastructure sector, for example, roads, there are some roads that are being financed through date, but they are all long overdue. If I could give you an example of the Northern Bypass that has been ongoing for the last seven years, this is a road that's not even a, more than 30 kilometers. So I realize there's no value for money. You can be building a road of 30 kilometers for about seven years. That's a project that, that is really difficult. And uh, you realize that most of the challenges we have are related to uh, the project management right away from inception because the records show that uh, some projects whereby government has borrowed money yet uh, we're not able to plan efficiently before we get the money for example certain roads because donors have also their terms most of the donors these days don't want to give you money for compensation you have to make sure that as government you look for that money so they will be able to give you terms that unless you fulfill this term we won't be able to give you money and uh, before you even get the money you have to a, some loans have commitment fees. You make a deposit that I'm willing to take this money. So you make a deposit, then you, you sign terms and conditions. You're like, I'll be able to kickstart this project maybe in this time when I'll get the funding. So already you've committed and you are liable to pay the interest even when the project has not kickstarted. Mm -hmm. So it, it is a bit tricky on our side because you're paying money for a project that's not in existence. And also, uh, some projects have had challenges, basically uh, delayed by land compensation. Mm -hmm. You come and look at, uh, you survey a certain area, you're like, this is where we're going to pass maybe a road or maybe a rail line. Then you're not able to get money mm -hmm. to compensate everyone. Of so course, some technicalities, some mm -hmm. people even because of lack of a law, mm -hmm. will just uh, hike the prices mm -hmm. more than the right value of those particular, these particular pieces of land. At the mm -hmm. end of the day, we've seen even some di designs that have been diverted yeah. Because a person is demanding for three billion for uh -huh. a piece of land that could even be about nine hundred million. Yes, that's true. But also sometimes when you do the valuation, mm -hmm. uh, because of delays in financing, mm -hmm. you're not able to compensate people in time. Let's say you come after a year, mm -hmm. maybe a, la a plot of land that was costing you twenty million, mm -hmm. now it is about thirty mm -hmm. or twenty-eight. Mm -hmm. Realize that your budget estimate can no longer fit into the current mm -hmm. uh, expenditure you have, mm -hmm. and also some people contest. So, uh, some valuations, you go to court and you realize whenever you go to court sometimes you either have mm -hmm. to delay uh, proceeding with the whole yeah, project, uh, process, yeah. which also affects you. But also, uh, some projects have had technical challenges mm -hmm. basically whereby either a uh, project like the Northern Bypass, most of the reasons uh, outlined for the delay include redesigning mm -hmm. some of the flyways. You realize the project you've already gotten money and then uh, all of a sudden you have to redesign. This is something that takes time. Mm. And also certain testing, structural uh, preparations. So you realize uh, you're delayed. But also there are times whereby uh, these projects have not performed well because of misuse of money, whereby project monitoring has been weak. 
whereby you realize a project is ongoing, but how often are you engaging with the contractor? How are you following up? Are you on ground to see that the quality of work Monitoring and supervision. Yes. Mm -hmm. And also the penalties mm -hmm. for contractors that do sh shoddy work. It has been, uh, the rules are there, but the level of implementation is a cost to the Ugandan. So you realize that uh, whenever you, 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 you're not uh, very strict with these contractors, mm -hmm maybe they are at liberty to either do substandard or don't follow the guidelines mm -hmm. and uh, if you're not following up with them strictly you risk either having an extension of the project which is also a cost because you're borrowing mm -hmm. money for certain time but you have to extend mm -hmm. which is also a very big challenge a big challenge mm -hmm. yeah with that uh, background of why we borrow how we spend and the challenges there now let's go to uh, something very critical that yes these are loans this is money that we must pay back and with interests. At such a time of COVID-19, when economies have been affected, James, let's look at the recovery process. Uh, how are we going to be able to reach to this? What do our donors say, the G8, the IMF? Uh, uh, how are they looking at us as countries? I'm reliably informed there was a conference in April, but I didn't follow up. Uh, that is to the end because of this time. But do we have a row of hope? Uh, are we going to have uh, some of these either interests, uh, pardoned, loans, further extended payment period? How are we standing? Uh, well, if uh, <coughs> in, in April, IMF and other organizations, World Bank, had a conference whereby they sat down and realized the economic impact of COVID on these low-income countries. And uh, one of the key decisions out of this conference was to suspend interest payment mm. till uh, for six months, which is uh, going to last up to next year. Such a short period. Uh, yeah, quite a short period, but uh, in effort to give uh, these countries uh, a breathing line to use that money that they would have invested in paying interest and principal to kickstart their economies. But uh, whereas this could sound very good in the ears of uh, many countries and their citizens, it is quite a challenge because if they are forgiving you to pay interest, maybe it is a reliever in one way, but if your economy has been severely affected, you've not been earning so much money as you expected, you realize that there is a double-edged sword, you can say. Someone has given you a breather, but even the money you would have used to pay is not really there. Mm. So you're almost in equilibrium mm. at the starting point. Mm. But uh, the statistics reveal that uh, this decision could give a breather to about, uh, to all those low income countries of about 20% of their total date, in combination of all the date of those countries, which could be a very good uh, starting point. But uh, if you look at these countries, why, what, what is the biggest challenge now? You've been able to borrow money. Most of the projects are ongoing mm -hmm. where you've uh, invested your money and uh, they're long-term projects. Mm -hmm. These are projects where you will be able to get back your money in maybe 10 years to break even, mm -hmm. not even making a profit. And uh, you realize most of them are ongoing. Mm -hmm. So the impact may not be, uh, I can say, immediate. Mm -hmm. However much you implement in this it project. Because most infrastructure sector does not really, uh, the rate of return is not very quick. Yes. In some of these projects. So that means that even uh, the sixth month may not do so much. Yes. Because you're taking projects, you're taking money for projects, which money, uh, first and foremost, the projects are not going to end in a very short term, within mm. six months. And these projects do not give you returns very, very quick. So then are these advisable loans to take? Well, you could say uh, the whole idea is that uh, debt can be sustainable mm. if you have st stable cash flow. Okay. I'll give an example. If you have a school mm. and you borrow money for, for, for maybe expanding your school, mm -hmm. if you're sure that you'll be able to get enrollment mm. and the, the parents are willing to pay the school fees, you won't feel the pinch of the debt you're having. Mm. That's why you realize that countries like, uh, if I could give an example like the U.S., they have a, a debt to GDP ratio which is above 120%, mm. 140 over there in that region. But they're not, uh, I can say, they're not strained to pay those, those debts because as an economy, they're making more money. Mm. 
But if you look at the statistics, uh, according to the World Bank, the Ugandan economy was projected to grow during this year at about 6%. But uh, because of COVID, there were revisions in the projections, which uh, go up to about 3%. And the economy is expected to recover, to grow at maybe the next financial year at about 3.7%. Mm. So you realize that if the economic growth is, is a bit reduced, your potential to uh, develop and get more money from different sectors, be it tax and non-tax mm. revenue, is a bit constrained. You may not meet your targets. So that means uh, paying the debt will be a challenge mm. because you're, you're growing at a rate which is almost 50% mm. uh, compared to the one you had projected. Mm. So that is a challenge which countries are facing. You may not be able to pay as much as you wanted to. Mm. And also because of COVID-19, it has shown that there is need to uh, make certain strategic uh, investments in other sectors to see that the country recovers because uh, according to Minister of Finance about 2.6 million people might fall into poverty mm. and these are Ugandans who maybe initially were earning the either direct or indirectly from those different sectors like tourism agriculture and trade but now they cannot be able to mm. Uh, support themselves. Now, yeah. you, you talked about cancellation of debt, and, and for me it is a bit still disturbing. Mm. Uh, countries like Uganda and very many others, probably what you want to call the third world countries or developing countries, mm. borrow money with the intention mm. to perform whatever work they do. Talk about infrastructure, some of them are long term, others are short term. Like, uh, for example, in COVID, Uganda mm. borrowed a lot of money, yes. left, right, center, for the short term for the moment. Uh, but why are we calling upon these players, people who borrow us money, to waive some of these interests on these loans? Why are we not pushing our governments to do good utilization of such monies used or rather gotten from these institutions? Uh, Which is the safer? Is it safer for us to push our governments or the institutions that borrow this money to put to the proper utilization of these kind of monies than for us to call for these cancellations? Uh, well, I think uh, your question falls into two categories mm -hmm. which lead to the same result. First and foremost, if you look at the reality of the economy at the moment, we may not be able to get so much money to pay back the loans at the moment. Mm. Then at the same time, you have uh, different priorities you can no longer put on hold. For example, the health sector. You need to get money to be able to finance uh, hospitals, to make sure that you have drugs, you make, to make sure you have put in place the different, uh, can I say, essentials for the sectors to operate. But also, uh, debt cancellation comes as a, a reliever for, 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 for these low-income countries to be able to use the money they would have used to pay interest maybe in the next five years, maybe in the next ten years, to make strategic investments in the health sector, in the agricultural sector, in the trade and tourism, maybe even in manufacturing, to ensure that they, they, they stand up beyond their current situation, mm -hmm. to be able to generate more wealth and in the long run to reduce the over-reliance on borrowing. Because however much borrowing is relevant for developing countries, the, you can always learn something from every situation mm -hmm. because uh, you cannot always rely on date. You have to look at, because Afri uh, mostly African countries, we are gifted with so many things. We have so many resources that are not being utilized efficiently to be able to generate more wealth. I would give an example in Uganda here. Look at our tourism. If we would make strategic investments in this industry to enhance our capacity, uh, human capital, and also the infrastructure to be able to promote tourism, we can generate a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Then uh, also, we can only say that uh, the, the, the debt relief comes as, a, can I say, an escape, an escape goat at the moment. But I if you look at the reality of the situation, it is feasible. But also, as we look into this uh, situation when we are advocating for this, it also comes back to government.
because the government is tasked with the role of serving the people and promoting their interests, uh, we can say that there the, are the different uh, structures or policies and uh, uh, guidelines on how to borrow money, what is the best way to utilize this money. I uh, would like to see that uh, we, we step up our effort to mostly related to management mm -hmm. of this date. Mm -hmm. to ensure that if money comes to a certain sector and it is maybe misused by some officials mm -hmm. or maybe we make uh, poor procurement, what, 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 what guidelines are in place? Mm -hmm. Let's follow them. Let's observe them. Let's ensure that uh, contractors that do shoddy work don't get to do work again. Mm -hmm. Let it be a learning lesson. Then also le 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 let those officials who misuse money be able to uh, be held accountable. Mm. And maybe refund this back to the office. Yes, because this is money mm. you and I have to pay mm. because you're the taxpayer. Then also, to ensure that we, we are at a time whereby we need to also develop the capacity of our local farms mm. to be able to take over such projects because you realize if you get a contractor from abroad, the contractor is charging in dollars. Mm and I uh, realize that our shilling has not been doing so well previously. Sometimes it is up and down. But also and lose uh, a bit tricky. So I remember one time we hosted, I think, the executive director, that is a, uh, that is a public procurement, and, mm -hmm. and this is what he said, that even contractors, we have contracts that are specifically for our local farms mm -hmm. uh, to a tune of some monies. Then above that, it is for uh, those foreign contractors that come into this country that we've not yet built capacity for our own farms to take on these big construction, construction projects. Yes, that could be true. Mm. I agree with you. But also, this may not be an immediate mm. strategy, okay, yes. but we can look in the mid-term and the long-term mm. so that these farms of ours mm. are, able to, because are able to do at least mm. a good percentage of our work, let's mm. say about 60%. Okay. Uh, capital could be a very big challenge and equipment, but uh, if you put in place uh, a strategy, maybe you say in the next 10 years, mm. we'd like to mm. see maybe at least 50% of the projects mm. that are ongoing be implemented by the local farms. You can achieve that. Mm. And through that, you can work with, with the deliberate effort to that. Yeah, yes. You can work with different agencies mm. like the engineering board mm. and among the Ministry of Education, mm. the different universities, to ensure that you put in place programs mm. that can enhance the capacity of these professionals in, and looking in the long term to ensure that you achieve your target. Mm. And also a very big component of this goes to research and development, mm. whereby you have to work with different stakeholders like universities, which are the center of knowledge, to be able to achieve this. Because in the long run, uh, research has shown that for a country to develop, mm. there must be uh, the, the, the domestic economy should be at the forefront. Mm. Because if you're in your own home, no one <coughs> thinks better than you who sleeps there. Mm. So which calls us to think in the long term to put in place strategies that can mm. uplift our local farms. When they are making more money, it is here domestically. Mm. And you, you yes, uh, same picture as Uganda debt network. Yes. When we look at this consolation, actually, for me, I don't think that it is going to greatly boost recovery, economic recovery. Uh, six months of uh, countries not submitting their interests. Uh, on these loans. You've not cancelled the loans. The loans are still there. All you've given us is a, a holiday for paying interest. And when you look at the economies, like you rightly put it earlier on, if you're expected to develop at that is a, a 6% and now you're going at 3%, do you think this cancellation in any way uh, will be reflected in the economy that these monies that would be meant to pay that I believe are not even there right now? So how in any way are low income countries are uh, assisted by this move? Well, uh, if you examine the ex uh, suspension of interest mm. for six months, it, c it may not breathe so much into mm. these economies mm. because uh, you realize that these economies are not making money at the moment. And, uh, <coughs> but in the long run, mm -hmm. if you have a suspension of the date, because these economies, at the end of the day, they will be able to recover. So they'll be able to generate money, but not in one, two years. Maybe mm -hmm. you're looking at the mid-term and the mm -hmm. long-term. Mm -hmm. So they'll be able to generate more revenue, mm -hmm. which can be used to invest in those 
different sectors because each country has its own strength. If you look at Uganda, we have a lot of uh, wealth that can support agriculture and tourism. So you make sure that you use that money in the midterm to make strategic investments in those sectors and you'll be making more wealth. Mm. More wealth will translate into uh, <coughs> more employment mm. and when people have jobs and money, mm. they can be able to pay more tax. Mm. And as a country, you can move forward. But it, for the midterm, mm. for, for, for it is a strategy that would do so well mm. in the midterm and mm -hmm. the long term. Mm -hmm. But for the immediate impact, mm. it may not be felt as much. Yeah. Okay, it may not be felt as much. That is six months of interest suspension on the loans that is for low-income countries. And, of course, the expert we have here, that is James Sempija from Uganda Debt Network, says this may not unless in the long term. That's what we expect. But you can be part of this topic of discussion by calling in. That is the number on your screen, 0702 232425. 0702-23-24-25. 24, 25. Please feel free to come be part of the topic of discussion as we are looking at that is economic recovery uh, here when we look at the time of COVID-19 and how are we really going to uh, come out of this knowing our debt burden is high. Yes, there has been suspension for uh, six months, but how is this even reflected? Uh, do we have these monies that, okay, for six months they're not going to be paying? So let's divert them to something else that will be paying uh, loan interest the experts will tell you even the economy. Hello, Hello good morning. Hello, good morning. Hello. Good morning. Yes, sir. The Mukama one get us at Uri. The dividing Okay, uh, the caller, but we don't even have a federal system of governance in this country. But it says the unitary system, according to him, uh, we cannot effectively put this money. If it was given in the federal system, the various regions would be able to make good use of this money. <laughs> I wonder if you're going to borrow uh, funds for a road, then how, if it is going to be in one particular part of the country, so how would each part benefit from that fund? Or construct its own roads? I don't believe our donors would go into such a way of giving us loans. Hello, good morning. Hello, you're live on UBC TV. Please just give us your name and where you're calling from. 0702-2324. That is the number on your screen. If you're to call in, kindly move away from your TV set. Then give us your name, where you're calling from, and please go ahead with your observation, with your question to James, or any issues, clarification. Uh, we are still looking at how best we can recover that is from COVID-19. And of course, the debt cancellation, to me I refer it as uh, suspension of interest for a period of six months, Will we really do much with this? This is the topic that we are discussing today. Hello, good morning. Hello. Please kindly be a bit more audible. Can you please speak up? Well, unfortunately. Hello. Hello, good morning. Morning. Morning, comrade. Who are we speaking to? We are speaking to. This is? Okay, just go ahead. 
Yes, uh, Edwin, go ahead, please. Uh, mm. uh, after the I'm trying to get you. Continue. Edwin. Hello. Well, I don't know if Felix was able to get you. Maybe he would. Or even James, but I think oh, I, huh? I didn't I get Edwin more. very well. He wasn't audible enough. So please, if you're to call in, kindly try to be more audible. I try my best to get at least something from uh, what you're saying, but I'm sorry, Edwin, I Hello. failed to. Hello, Hello. good morning. Hello. This is? Hello. Hello, you're live on UBC TV. Just give me your name. Mm. Morning. Morning to you, madam. You're calling from Bali? Patricia from Bali. Yes, I don't know if I did you get Patricia from Bali. What she was saying? She was saying hello to you. Hello to me. To you people. To you people. Okay. <laughs> thank you so much for calling in Patricia uh, from Bali and thank you for watching the show. We really appreciate and even that call. Uh, thank you so much. I think I'll try my luck with my final caller uh, this morning. Please move away from your TV set. Be a bit more audible. Then I'm sure I'll be able to communicate with one another. Hello. Good morning. Yes, you're live on UBC TV. Just give me your name and where you're calling from. Hello, this is your radio. This is? What? Hello, you're on live on TV. Please go ahead. Yes, this is, your, this is Elijah. Yes, Elijah. Yes. Yes, Elijah. So, I'm not going to be together with Yeah, I think that you can tell me that I think uh, try to reproduce from the meeting. To do what? Oh, the Ugandan government should do what, Elijah? I think we should try to recruit people. Like, it doesn't make people should be recruited for this recovery of our community. In case there are lots of us, it's going to be because we are open to the country. And if they get a money, the money won't be done. Want to use a property to understand. So what we need is we recruit our agents that we need faithful agents mm. dealing with this situation. Thank you, Elijah, uh, for calling in. And uh, let me end calls at that. So that I go back to our guest in studios, who is James Sempija from Uganda Debt Network. Uh, Sempija, so much has been said. Some, of course, I want to first begin by thanking everybody who has called in and those that have tried and have not been able to go through. Thank you so much for calling in. And those that are watching but you've not been able to call in, really appreciate waking up and finding time to be with us on this show. Uh, James, we had a uh, thing that was Trudeau who mentioned uh, the issue of uh, that is federal system. He says these loans when government is getting them, uh, they, the money should be distributed so that we look at which region has not performed. But otherwise, in this kind of governance system, he feels that loans cannot be put to proper use. Uh, well, uh, I would say that uh, I would thank him for his uh, opinion. But if you look at the current uh, system of governance, we don't have federal, uh, federal state here in Uganda. And also, considering the way we get loans, mm. it might be so hard for you to negotiate with a donor that you want a project for a certain region. And uh, how are you able to uh, do a cost-benefit analysis? Let's say if I build uh, a road uh, in the east, maybe let's say in Busoga region, how will I be able to make uh, an estimate that how many people are benefiting from Busoga? Because you might find the road can also be serving other regions, maybe indirectly or directly. So it may not be easy to have a certain system of governance uh, in the federal uh, system. But uh, 
I think his uh, opinion w would be quite relevant in the aspect of the management of the money to ensure that uh, it is put to the best use. And uh, at the moment, uh, as a country, if we are planning to move forward, we also need to sit back and reflect on how we've been able to perform in a more realistic way uh, uh, through public debt finance projects. We can learn from the mistakes we have made and improve. Because if you don't learn from your mistakes, you're uh, going for disaster. Mm -hmm. So that can be a very good point to learn from our mistakes and also build upon our strengths to ensure that uh, we, we, we maximize our potential as a country. Mm -hmm. Yes. Then we had our final caller, Elijah, because Patricia was just saying hi and thanking us appreciating the show. He mentioned a couple of things. I think if I got him right, mm. uh, stand to be corrected by Felix and you. He said that we should empower our own so that we get loans, uh, we focus more on domestic loans than uh, that is uh, uh, loans from these other big donors. And so this, to him, he believes they will not have so much of terms and conditions and, of course, government proximity. Maybe they'll be put more to effective use. Well, uh, ideally that would be the best option because uh, it has been proved globally that if uh, domestic debt is not a problem because if you, if, if, if you demand a 2 million Ugandan shillings, it will not be 10 million tomorrow mm. or it will not be 3 million tomorrow. But if you've borrowed money from, uh, let's say, America, mm -hmm. today the dollar is at maybe 3,400. Then the next day, the dollar is at 3,800. You realize that for every dollar you've borrowed, you have to pay back more 400 shillings, mm. which is a very big cost to you. Mm. So ideally, it would be best for a country to borrow domestically. But if you look at our GDP, which is about uh, maybe $34 billion, we are still growing. Mm. And if you want to borrow all that money from the domestic economy, you will bring about what they call the crowding out effect which means that uh, if, if for these institutions, maybe the banks and the private firms that are willing to give government money, mm. because government, ideally, you know, on a global scale, the loans given to governments are considered to be quite secure because mm. governments are willing to pay that money using their tax revenue, basically, and among other resources. So <coughs> if, if I'm a private, uh, let's say, entity, I would be more willing to give money to government because I know I'll recover this money at, by all means. Mm -hmm. So that means you're reducing the amount of money available for the private sector, mm -hmm. which is a crowding out effect. Mm -hmm. And if you're reducing the amount of money available for the private sector, that means the demand from the private sector is high, mm -hmm. but the supply of the funds is low. So they will be borrowing this money at a very high cost, mm -hmm. which translates into the high cost of doing business. High cost of doing business limits the profitability of these farms, and this is why you're going to generate your revenue. Mm -hmm. So that is the, the whole dilemma behind it. But if a country was uh, at a certain level of wealth, mm -hmm. it would be the ideal way to do things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So here, just uh, the competition, then at the end of the day, the sources of revenue are not able to provide that revenue yes. for you to service uh, these loans. Well, time is not on our side that much. But uh, James, as we come to the end of this show, uh, let's look at more what uh, alternatives you as Uganda Death Network are you putting on table at such a particular time? Because right like you've said in this show, uh -huh. this suspension of interest may not give us uh, short-term benefits. Yet COVID-19 is still with us yes. this year and we are feeling the pinch day by day. It would have worked in case we were able to generate these monies that you're just going to divert them to another section of the economy. But yeah. what is happening, we can't even generate the money. So what they cancelled, still we didn't have the money anyway. So what should be the way forward for recovery of our economies? Well, uh, this is a combination of so many strategies, but I'll briefly talk about some of the strategies that are quite relevant to our country. Uh, first of all, the way of operating government, I believe you realize that this has been a time for us to understand what is the most important thing because you realize that uh, technology is at the forefront at the moment. And this is a time for government to also think about reducing uh, expenditure on things that can be done using a digital system. 
For example, there's a lot of money spent on uh, printing and other things. If you look at digitizing government, that is one of saving money, you're saving resources. Then another way is uh, to ensure that uh, you participate effectively in all the development projects we're going uh, to undertake. Then also uh, another strategy rotates around knowing our strength as a nation. Mm. What are we blessed at? We are blessed at with a very beautiful weather, beautiful climate. This is something that can attract many tourists to come mm. here. The Pearl of Africa. Pearl of Africa. Let's make sure that we advertise as much as possible mm. and putting in place other strategies. I'll give you an example of uh, a very known uh, airline, the Emirates. Mm. Uh, globally, their business model is not profit making as much as they make the profit. Their motto is that to make sure that Emirates fly so many people into uh, the United Arab Emirates, mm -hmm. that is bringing more tourism uh, revenue mm -hmm. indirectly. So even if the, uh, the airline is not making so much, mm -hmm. you're able to recoup all your money spent on the airline through the tourism revenue. This is the same idea Kenya Airways is operating. Mm -hmm. You realize that this airline, uh, actually during this COVID, they've been having a loss of about $100 million. But if you look at the revenue K Kenya Airways brings to the tourism industry, mm -hmm. it's a lot. And you cannot just shut down such an airline mm -hmm. because the, benefit, uh, the benefits outweigh the cost. Mm -hmm. So uh, the revival of the Uganda Airlines is quite a very good uh, strategy. Intervening. Uh, yes. And I think we can build on that mm -hmm. to ensure that we are bringing more traffic mm -hmm. Here for to promote tourism, that is one way. Look at uh, our what else? Sports. Mm. Realize that uh, recently Cheptege, Kiprotich, mm. and other mm. athletes have been doing so well mm. on a global scale. Yes. This should be our amb ambassadors. Mm. How do we uh, uh, market Uganda through sports? Mm. Because uh, you realize that for a global event, all eyes are maybe on that very event, mm. and you can use that to market yourself as a country. Mm. Kenya has been doing that and other countries. Then also, uh, it is ideal for Uganda to make strategic investments in private uh, profit-generating enterprises. COVID has shown us that however much so many sectors have been affected, the essential se services sector have been operating. Mm -hmm. If you look at uh, Kenyan government, they have shares in Safaricom. It's a telecommunication company, and Safaricom has been making quite a lot of money over the years. It is one of the most profitable businesses in Africa, I must say. You're able to generate revenue through holding shares. And uh, I think that can give us a perspective of how, as a country, we need to think. We can make strategic investments in those different industries. Mm. Yes. Well, thank you so much. That is James Sempija from Uganda Debt Network for having found time to join us on set as we've been discussing that is economic recovery prospects and how best our economies can move forward as low income countries. He's given us some of the views there, some of the proposals if we really follow up, that is uh, the gifts that we have as a country, the power of Africa like Churchill noted, but also digitalization of government agencies. This is so much money. Uh, most of the times now people are not traveling, so we believe there is all this money that if we put to proper use, then it will boost our recoveries. I want to thank you so much. We have been part of this show. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being with us here on UBC TV. And of course, the big team behind the scenes, that is our technical team there. I want to appreciate you. My colleague Felix Sinkunda, uh, brother Ratoro Nasa Mukasa, Famba Fiona, uh, Thank you so much, guys. I just want to wish you a lovely day. Till tomorrow, uh, we'll leave you with a quote of the day. Ruben will be here to take you to the world of sports. And Jagenda Semakula will be here to take you through Good Morning Uganda Extra. Hope you will tell us more of the future of Uganda Post Congress there, <laughs> where their president uh, lost it in courts of appeal. Have a lovely day. God bless you. God bless Uganda.